So given everything that we have said today, I am curious about where you and other leading string theorists are in your work with regard to the fine tuning problem. I haven't been thinking about it for a long time. We got sight, <laughs> right. Events happened. Um, one of the, I had worked on the quantum mechanics of gravity and black holes and so forth for a long period of time. I came to conclusions about it, which are widely accepted now, the so-called holographic principle and other things. Uh, the idea that um, Hawking was just dead flat wrong about his information. And, and another man who I admire enormously, unfortunately he's dead also. Everybody I admire, I admire dies. It tends to happen with humans. It tends to happen with humans. Where were we? Yeah. Um, so I had thought about these things a long time, written many papers. They're widely accepted now. And then came along Polchinski and Moroff and uh, their younger co their younger um, co-authors, um, Almeri and Sully, and they said, "No, that's wrong. Your your uh, your." Um, complementarity principle, your uh, principle of holography, they can't all fit together. No black hole horizons are firewalls. You can't go through them. They don't exist as uh, horizons in that sense. And they had some really, really compelling reasons why they thought that it had to do with entanglement. Uh, very dramatic conclusion. Namely, not only that everything I was saying was wrong, everything Hawking was saying was wrong, how you could not pass through the horizon of a black hole. And their arguments were so compelling that I, I and a lot of the community had to drop everything and say, wait a minute, that can't be right. Bolchinsky and his friends must be wrong, but we don't know why. And um, so I stopped thinking about uh, the, the other things and spent all of my time trying to unravel this issue of firewalls, which I think I did together with, uh, as a sort of student of Juan Maldesenas. One I wrote a paper called, e it wasn't called ER equals EPR, it was called Cool Horizons for Hot Black Holes, or maybe Hot Horizons for Cool, I don't remember. <laughs> but. Um, we sorted that out, but that led to an entire new industry in theoretical physics called the it from qubit philosophy that, um, that quantum gravity is basically quantum mechanics and is um, the quantum mechanics of quantum information that um, so I got hooked by another set of questions. I've always intended to come back to this, uh, to the issues of, of multiverse and so forth. But it's been so much fun to explore the, um, the connections between quantum computing, between quantum complexity theory, between uh, entanglement theory and so forth, and, uh, and the issues of black holes, and now the issues of the sitter space that I got caught up in it, uh, and I, uh, I dropped, I dropped the ball. Actually, I, not completely. My latest work has been on the sitter space and the quantum mechanics of the sitter space, which is part of the cosmology story. But um, th those questions, let me put it this way, I'm too old to come back to anything, I'm 84 years old. Uh, you know, 84-year-olds don't have the flexibility to make sharp turns and so forth. I'll continue what I'm doing for the, for, for the rest of my life, probably. But um, there's no question in my mind that the physics community has to come back to these questions of cosmology, of multiverses, of um, anthropic principles and so forth. It must. It cannot drop it. It's there, and it's one of the most important parts of nature. We have to see it through. Seeing it through may mean proving it's wrong, but, uh, but seeing it through, I think, is essential. <laughs>